Today we're gonna to have our third and hopefully final look at trying to get video out of this machine. And I think I've figured out the definitive solution to making it happen. You're in the basement. Now I've just realized I've forgotten something which I need for this video. So I'm just gonna go and grab it back in a sec. Hi, and welcome to, who are you? I'm PCB Way. Uh, actually, you just look like me in a stupid hat. No, I'm PCB Way. That doesn't even make any sense. PCB Way is where you get high quality PCBs. Yes, that's me. So you mean to say that not only do you provide high quality PCBs, but you can assemble them, including all parts like resistors, diodes, and chips? Sure. I like chips. It's not even the right kind of chips. I meant microchips. You mean like this? And not to mention the real PCB way offers CNC machining, 3D printing, design and layout services, instant quotes, and all with a lightning fast turnaround. Watch this turnaround. If you need a real product done real fast with real results and real quality, check out the real PCB way. They make it easy. Almost there. And here it is, it's the GBS 8220. Now this fancy little thing is a way of getting RGB signal into VGA. And uh, as we know, the Atari outputs RGB of a certain type, and it's not compatible with modern VGA monitors. Some monitors do multi-scan and they'll read the signal, but most modern monitors, they, uh, they won't understand what the signal is the uh, refresh rate's too low. So what this little device does is it outputs a standard VGA signal that any monitor can accept. So it's quite simple. Um, it just takes an R, G and B input, red, green and blue, and they come in here. And it also needs a sync, a composite sync input as well. So what I've done on our Atari is I've made up this lead here. On one end is the monitor plug and what I've done is I've wired some uh, connections to RGMB, um, horizontal sync and vertical sync and ground. And they go through to this nine pin connector on this end. And I've also connected the audio to um, just um, to the mono audio out to the stereo plug, which will plug in with the monitor as well for audio. So that's, um, that gets our signal from the Atari out to this plug here, which doesn't plug into this here. They're two different types of plugs. And there's a reason for that. Because this uh, nifty little device, the GBS8220, it only accepts composite sync. And I'm outputting horizontal sync and vertical sync. Now, bear with me, it's a little bit boring, I know. But uh, I have to convert horizontal and vertical sync into composite sync. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, but Johan, pin two on the Atari output has composite sync already. Just wire that in and you'll be set. And yes, you'd be right, normally. Uh, however, there's two reasons why I can't do it that way for, for this purpose. Uh, the first reason being, on a previous video, we converted this unit to S-Video here. So you can see the S-Video output, which works fine. Um, although it's fairly redundant because I've since realized I don't have any S-Video monitors or TVs. Uh, <laughs> but unfortunately, as part of that modification, I had to remove the composite um, part of the board. So it doesn't output composite anymore, which is a pain, um, which is one of the reasons why we're doing it this way. The other reason why I'm combining horizontal and vertical sync and not using the composite output is because of this. So I picked up the other day this Atari Mega, Mega ST. Now, given that it's a standard ST in a desktop case, it means it doesn't have a modulator, so it's not outputting any composite video. So uh, this, the way I'm doing this cable is gonna work also for the older machines that don't have a modulator inside and can't output composite. So that's a whole bunch of technical mumbo jumbo to say uh, I'm making a lead and a converter, which is gonna get video out of this machine, convert it to VGA and get it onto a monitor for any Atari ST device 
out there. Now there's one missing link, of course, we, like I said before, we can't just plug these together. We have to somehow change our horizontal and vertical sync to composite sync so that this will read it. And that's where this comes in. Now, here's one I prepared earlier. This is built off a design I saw on a forum. And I'll post a link to that forum below. And so I've mocked it up and to test that it worked because I've actually tried this several times using uh, other people's designs with different various ways and none of them worked reliably. Uh, this is the first design that I've built and it just works perfectly. The pitch is clear, there's no glitching and it works across all the devices. So this is the way to do it. Uh, forget what everyone else says, um, I recommend doing it this way. Again, link in the description down below if you want to do it as well. So I'll run through exactly what's going on and then we're going to turn this uh, breadboard version into a uh, soldered finished version and plug it all together and hopefully it works. So first of all we've got our D sub 9 pin coming in from the Atari so that ends plugged into the Atari. We've got our signals coming out here uh, and it plugs into this one. Now all I've done is I, I took a 9 pin, this is the same cable, I just cut it in half and wired one end into the Atari and the other end into this breadboard here. So I'll quickly run through what's going on in case you want to do the same thing yourself. Um, niche audience I know, but hey, we're here so let's have a look at it. So we've got our horizontal and vertical sync coming in here on the yellow and orange lines, which then go through over to this chip here. Now this chip is a 74LS86 and it is an XOR gate. Um, I know nothing about electronics. All I did was looked at the diagram and copied the stuff that he had on there and went down to my local uh, electronics store and said I need these pieces and they sold them to me. So I've since just built it that way. So if I can do it, anyone can do it. So essentially the horizontal and vertical sync come into this gate and this gate and they come out of this output here. And then this output goes into one leg of another gate as well as five volts into that gate and that has our final output coming through the resistor and off to the GBS8220. So if you've sat through that and you're still watching, uh, <laughs> we'll talk about uh, the GBS8220. So I'll put it down here for the tabletop camera. So it came with this plug here. So I've just repurposed that and that just plugs in to this, uh, this socket here. And it also has came with this one here, which gives us five volts out, which is handy because we need five volts for our board. So they plug in there like that. And, and it outputs VGA out of both of these. Now, the reason I wanted one with two is because um, the whole point of me fiddling around with all of this stuff, trying to get video out of the machine, was I wanted to record some gameplay. Um, or at least get screen captures of when I'm doing stuff for filming because it's much better than just filming a screen. So I figured if I've got two VGA outs, I can be running one to a monitor that I'm looking at to be playing games or doing stuff with software, and the other can be running to a capture where I'm recording that so that when I'm uh, editing, it, editing it into the video later, it's nice and clear for you guys to see. So that's why I got that model there. But if you don't need to do that, there's, they sell these with just the single uh, VGA outs on them. And you can get one of those probably a couple of bucks cheaper. So all in, um, I think this whole setup was probably around about 30 bucks. Um, not hugely expensive. And it's going to be really convenient in that I can use it for any Atari ST. Um, and I can just plug it into any VGA monitor. So that's really what I wanted. Just an easy, always working perfect solution so hopefully that's what this is um, so why don't we power it on and test it and i'll just show you guys that it is working properly and then we'll look at soldering all this stuff to a board and packaging it up into a finished solution okay first thing we'll plug in the monitor 
and we should probably also plug in some power so then we'll plug in the Atari monitor cable to my adapter and then we'll plug in the VGA monitor to the adapter and lastly we'll power the adapter And you can see a little LED lights come on there saying, yep, I've got power and I'm happy. Okay, so we know that the GBS 8220 is working because we're getting the no signal on the monitor there, which is telling us that, uh, that it's working. It's just waiting for an input. So let's fire on the Atari and there we go. So I've got a USB stick in the GoTek, so it's just loading some bootleg uh, thing, whatever was on the USB drive. So it's just loaded up Dizzy and Fantasy World. This is a game I've been using to test all of my different uh, variants of video out. Um, so you can hear the sound's working fine. That's coming out of that same plug straight into the back of the monitor. And the monitor's looking great. So um, everything is working as it should. So one last thing I just want to demonstrate is it's got a uh, on-screen display where you can go into the menu and it's got all the different menu settings there. So you can change the language. It came standard um, with, uh, I assume, Chinese or Mandarin. And so it took a bit of fiddling around to change it to English <laughs> when it first arrived. Uh, but it's in English now, so I can actually read the menus. Um, so under the display... It, um, it just defaulted to 800 by 600 and everything looks great so I've just left it at that. Um, now the other settings you have here is you have your geometry menu um, and I played around with this but it seemed to just glitch out the screen and kept freezing the picture so I reset it um, to default and um, it did like an auto, uh, it's like an auto adjust when I rebooted it and everything seems great, so I just left it again. Um, the other thing you can change is the brightness and contrast. So I've pumped them right up because it was quite dark on this monitor. Um, I've given it a little bit more saturation. I've left sharpness the same. Um, but you know, you can have a play with however you want it to look. Don't judge my soldering too harshly. This is the first time I've ever built a circuit, so um, it was quite uh, it was quite a fun process. I quite enjoyed the uh, the process of figuring out how to how it all goes together, and um, hopefully it works. So we'll connect it and check it, and uh, we'll be back in a second. That's been a great success. We have the adapter which I've made. It's in this handy dandy little um, I think it was like a body cream box. Now you know how I keep my skin so soft and supple. Uh, anyway, it's a, a nice um, container for that, keeps it safe. Uh, so it comes out of here, into here, into here, into here, and it's all working fine. So eventually I'll probably find a one box solution where I can have the adapter that I've made and this thing here as well, all in the one box. Um, so I've just got sort of an easy plug and play solution. But um, why don't we just check that this Mega ST works uh, with this adapter as well because the Mega ST doesn't have any modulator so we'll know for sure then if the VGA works. So I'll just swap the cables over and we'll see if we get any picture. So uh, this is the Mega ST and it's um, 
all is not well. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's our adapter. I think it's, there's something wrong with the machine here. So um, that's going to be actually something for a future episode. We're going to pull it apart, fix up the corrosion, see if we can get it working properly. But for now, I'm happy. We've got the RGB to VGA adapter working in its neat little case. And uh, yeah, I'll be able to play uh, all these Atari games on the VGA monitor and use all the applications and stuff on just a, a normal monitor. So I'm um, really happy with that. It's been a job well done. You've been in the basement. Have a great day.